Live from Austin, Texas, broadcasting worldwide, it's Alex Jones. We are joined for the next 25 minutes by Dr. Paul Craig Roberts. He's an American economist, and he's, of course, a syndicated columnist as well. He's a former editor of the Wall Street Journal and Business Week, and he is the father of Reaganomics, and he's really uh, needs no introduction to our audience. We have a lot of new stations, a lot of new listeners, so I guess he does. And uh, we'll give you his website address as well. Uh, on screen coming up here uh, in just a moment. We also carry his work at Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. Uh, but before I go any further, uh, I just want to cover the waterfront with him to make sense of what's going on in the economic meltdown, clearly a global depression. Uh, this Market Watch article, scary 1929 market chart, uh, gains traction. Um, government is gearing up for a collapse. I think we're going into a slow collapse, but... I want to get an update from him on that. But first, the reason I wanted to get him on last week, and now he's here, is to talk about Ukraine. And again, I'm not a Putinite, but compared to what we've got, uh, you know, our system's so bad, he, he, and he's not ag aggressively trying to expand things. He stopped the Syria war, the purge of Christians. Clearly, the Saudi Arabians are bombing him because they didn't go along with the takeover of Syria to destabilize uh, the Olympics. But uh, you, you, uh, you see Ukraine not voting at first to go with uh, the EU. And now um, Russia is not even trying to control Ukraine from what I've seen. Uh, I want a free and independent Ukraine. And George Soros' people are all over this as usual trying to destabilize Russia because they want a new world order run by the Wall Street kleptocrats. They want a new world order run by anti-free market folks that make the wolf of Wall Street Jordan Belford looked like a saint. Uh, and uh, that's, that's the bottom line. This is not America doing this to Russia. This is criminal elements doing it, in, in my view. I want Dr. Roberts' take on that. So, so there's the preface of, of, of my questions and how I see it. Uh, this is a big deal, though, to, to be trying to overthrow Ukraine and audio recordings of this, obviously, with ambassadors coming out and a very serious situation, uh, Dr. Roberts. Uh, give us your expert breakdowns. I know you were in big talks with the Russians, to, so they bring down their, their empire at the end of the Reagan administration. I know that you know a lot of these folks. You know the French. Uh, you've gotten their highest award uh, for some of the work you've done on that front as well. What's really happening right now? And the Ukraine... Um there was a, a joint effort initially between the EU and Washington uh, to uh, bring the <clears throat> EU, uh, sorry, to bring the Ukraine into NATO and into EU. Now, the, the EU just wanted uh, an expansion of its uh, domain. Uh, Washington wanted uh, to uh, have uh, the Ukraine incorporated into NATO so they can put more military bases on Russia's frontier. And they also want to uh, have their puppets running the country so that can be opened up for looting by the American banks and the American corporations, you know, like, for example, Latvia was. So what has happened is... Uh, for uh, many years, uh, Washington and also the EU have been financing uh, what are called NGOs, non-governmental organizations in Ukraine. Last December, this uh, Victoria Newland, the Assistant Secretary of State who's running the operation, the American operation there, told the National Press Club that Washington had invested $5 billion dollars in agitation in the Ukraine. And so what we're witnessing now is all of these NGOs, some of them pretend to be human rights organizations, some pretend to be educational, to teach democracy, uh, some are just uh, provocative. Um, and they have uh, used these, uh, that is the State Department, the CIA, have used these uh, institutions, these NGOs, uh, to um, uh, have this ongoing protest. Now, the EU and Washington have now fallen out over this because the EU has realized that uh, for Washington to take over the Ukraine is a direct threat to Russia. 
And they realize that Russia can cut uh, Europe off from oil and natural gas. And they realize that if there's a war, uh, Europe will be destroyed. And that's why we don't need Ukraine to fall to the EU that's going to suck it dry. That's like asking to have cancer implanted in you. Clearly yeah. predatory. As you know, their own EU documents have come out that it was a planned program to consolidate and suck countries dry. So the Ukrainians vote to not join it. And so they have hordes of paid operatives take to the streets. It'd be one thing if these were real you know, uh, Ukrainians wanting to get rid of their government. But clearly these are foreign manipulated saboteur operatives by every by every benchmark well um the ngos are financed uh, by the west and they're and they have provoked it but i think most of the people out there are just dupes and they're ukrainians oh of course uh, yeah the, the western ukraine is sure, i'm uh, talking about the ngos that are made up of ukrainian operatives sorry i was talking about the ngos themselves doctors yeah yeah, yeah. Go ahead. yeah well uh, I was in Washington when they decided to create the uh, National Endowment for Democracy, which is sort of the parent organization for these NGOs. And the explicit purpose given was that it would be used uh, to destabilize uh, Eastern Europe and, uh, and, uh, and Soviet republics and would be used for the benefit of uh, American hedge enemy. And that's the reason it was created. And so we've seen it operate in many places. Uh, they tried to achieve that uh, revolution, that color revolution in the Ukraine. What they call it? The Orange Revolution, I think. Yes, they've tried over and over again. And they came very close to getting the Ukraine then. And, uh, and they tried to have Georgia start a war with Russia. A very dangerous situation. Um, what do you expect Russia to do? I mean, they're, they're, they're starting to really get in more of a fighting stance. Well, I don't know uh, what, what they will do. Um, I, one prospect is the country will split apart because the, the eastern Ukraine is more Russian. It's Russian Orthodox. Uh, the western Ukraine is less Russian. It's Catholic. Um, and I think that it's really two countries, and what you may see is uh, is a split. Um, what I find so distressing is that the uh, Ukrainians in the I think these protests are largely in the West, Western part. No, they are. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and and so uh, what I find distressing is that these protesters are such dupes that they're destroying the independence of their own country. They, they don't understand that if you are in the EU, that your national government is subservient to the EU. How government. can they not look at Greece and Spain and Ireland and everywhere? I mean, this is like wanting to get in the car with Jeffrey Dahmer or something. Why would anyone want to join the EU? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that just shows the influence of the NGOs. You know, the NGOs, like Victoria Newland said, they've, uh, Washington has spent $5 billion. That's $5,000 million. You can buy a lot of people for that money. <laughs> you can buy a lot. And, and the years of agitation by these NGOs, uh, and, and also, you know, in the, in the Western Ukraine, there's a huge disaffection from Russia. Uh, they, there's this romantic form of Ukrainian nationalism. And uh, there's a real uh, dislike of, of Russia. So even though Ukraine is independent now, uh, they have this notion that, well, the country will uh, somehow be under Russia's thumb unless we can get under the thumb of the Europeans and the Americans. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of a nonsensical thing, but it is very dangerous because uh, I think that the Russians do view uh, a NATO basis in the Ukraine, or in Ukraine as it's called now. That's right on their border. As, as a direct threat. And so they, and, and this is why there is now a, a divergence between the EU and uh, the United States, and why the Victoria Newland said, you know, screw the EU. Now, for those that don't know, tell them about that. Well, uh, the, the, Europeans realized that this was going too far and they wanted to stop encouraging the protests. 
because they understand that it dawned on them that it's a threat to Russia, and then therefore it's an indirect threat to Europe. And so they, the Europeans, the EU, said, we've had enough, let's stop these protests. And Washington said, no, we're going to keep them going. We're going to use the protests, turn it into a revolt, uh, take over the government. See, we've got a list of the candidates we're going to put in charge. And the EU was protesting. And, and by the so, way, that's what the Russians used to do, was get a quasi-puppet government in that would then invite them into these countries. We are doing what the USSR used to do. I mean, this is, we're doing the bad guy <laughs> deeds, correct? No, but we always have, especially in, in uh, Central and South America. There's never been any difference, really, between the United States and the Soviet Union and how they manipulate other countries. But what we're doing now is we're manipulating the countries in the Russian sphere of influence. <laughs> We've gone beyond our own sphere. Of influence. The whole world now is our sphere of influence. No, no other country has. And what do you make, what's the strategy? I mean, I want your take on this to have the athletes dressing like women. Uh, I mean, you know, everybody loved us because of James Dean and John Wayne. And, and I mean, guys look dressed like women, that's great. But should our national symbol be a man in drag? I mean, should that be our symbol at the, uh, at the Olympics? I, I don't think that propaganda is very well thought out. <laughs> no, it's not. But we don't need to, to get into that right now. We've got the Ukraine and the economy, which are important. No, no, absolutely. I'm just saying, uh, like British uh, you know, Deputy Defense Minister said two weeks ago, the United States doesn't even seem to have a strategy now except chaos, and we're losing all the soft power. What, what do you think of Washington right now? I mean, how would you describe its, its, its setup? I mean, do they know what they're doing? Are they out of control? What's going on? Uh, I think overall, uh, it's sort of out of control, but on specific things, they know what they're doing. They know what they're doing in the Ukraine. And notice that this week, the House of Representatives uh, overwhelmingly passed a resolution supporting the protest in the Ukraine, as if that's got anything to do with the United States. And they um, issued uh, a threat of imposing sanctions should the Ukrainian police put the protest down. So in other words, uh, if you treat uh, people there the way our police treat protesters in the United States, we're going to put sanctions on you. So it, this type of hypocrisy, it must stun the world. You know, what happens to peaceful protesters in the United States? They get beat up and tasered and, and tear That's dead. right. PaulCraigRoberts.org. Let me ask you this question then. Uh, looking at this, what does your gut tell you? How is the Ukraine going to go? Well, I, I don't know. I think that ultimately it could split. Um, if you, you see, the, the Ukraine, has, Ukraine has given up on putting down the protest, and they even abolished the laws against protest, and the police have been viciously attacked. A lot of them have been burnt with Molotov. Uh, Molotov cocktails. Uh, they've been charged uh, with bulldozers, but they haven't replied with the kind of violence that you would expect. Uh, any protesters in the United States acting like the Ukrainian protesters are would have been shot down the streets and killed because the Ukrainian protests are not peaceful. They're extremely violent. And the police are just sort of sitting there taking it. So I think... Uh, well, it's clear the government knows it was unpopular to join the EU, so they're acting like they're neutral, but the order's gone down, stand down, let this happen, fake Arab Spring, and then there'll be a civil war, it'll split up, which is the grand strategy of tension uh, that Brzezinski's been pushing, and, and th th there you go. I don't, think, uh, I don't think the United States wants it to split up, because if it does, then the Western part will be reincorporated in Russia. And they won't get the pipelines. And, 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 and that's right. And so the rump state uh, wouldn't be enough for the EU or the U.S. But I think what may happen uh, is that the EU simply disassociates from this policy and breaks off from it, which leaves it as a Washington thing only. And that then could weaken it. 
And uh, that could be a good cop, bad cop too. Let's let's get to the economy. We only have a little bit of this segment. The next one left. Uh, what do you make of the? I'm sure you've seen the market graph that the Wall Street Journal Market Watch has. Scary 1929 market chart gains traction. Uh, if market follows the same script, trouble lies directly ahead. They're slowing down on QE Unlimited, uh, Dr. Roberts.